Hey there, Commanders. Meet the Ripsaw, an entry-level, medium-tier AX ship with no engineering, no reputation, and no tech broker modules. This is the second entry in my Zero Grind AX ship build series, following after the Sawtooth. The only barrier to entry with the Ripsaw is your credit balance. With a total cost of about 80 million, this ship is fairly expensive, but every successful Cyclops kill more than pays your rebuy cost. The Chieftain is an excellent all-around platform for AX combat, and a personal favorite among the AXI. The ship is incredibly maneuverable, easy to find, affordable, and very much upgradable, making it an ideal next step from the small pad AX ships. There are endgame level commanders who choose to fly this ship over the other higher damage offerings because of its excellent handling characteristics and aggressive boost profile. Interested commanders can easily buy into this platform and evolve it from its more basic configurations into something really spectacular as they acquire tech brokers or engineers. Nearly every stock issue this ship has can be addressed with an engineering blueprint or tech broker add-on, which means that progression in the game gets felt with every improvement you are able to make to this ship beyond what is detailed here. Beginning with our core internals, we will be leveraging military-grade composite. As in previous AX-oriented ship builds, this armor package offers optimal hull boost at a lower cost than reactive composites. Without engineering, lightweight alloy makes a grand total of 1 meter per second max boost speed. So there is no point trying to make the Chieftain any lighter, though I do recommend buying the armor last, since it has an adverse effect on jump range. Our power plant is rated 6A, though players operating on a budget can easily use a 6B. This adds mass, slightly lowers efficiency and power output, but nets a large decrease in cost. If you're tight on funds, start with a B rating, and then come back for an A when you're ready to engineer. The thruster package is rated 6A. Of all the onboard systems, this is one I recommend going directly into. B-rated can get you by, but since we don't have engineering available on this build, we want as much agility as can be assembled. The only way to win this battle is to be a big spender. The frameshift drive is likewise A-rated. Unfortunately, even with A-rated hardware, the Chieftain is lucky to see most of 20 light years jump range. This isn't great, but it's also not terrible. When you do get around to upgrades, the Tech Broker 5A frameshift drive is best. An engineer cannot give you anything better in this size category. Just bring the parts the broker requests, and one drive unit is immediately yours. Life support on the Chieftain is best fitted 5A, for maximum durability and performance. The Chieftain has a large canopy that is great for visibility, but not for breathability, so having more time to get air is best. The power distributor is rated 6A. A 6B can be substituted early on, but should be swapped for an A-rated unit before upgrades begin. Doing so leaves the door wide open for easy upgrades later on, though it can drive a few Guardian weapons well enough without engineering, and has permaboost capability out of the box. Sensors are size 4A, though B-rated equipment is perfectly workable here. Once engineered, the Chieftain is stupid fast, so low overall sensor range is less of an issue, though I do still prefer A-rated scanning for more situational awareness. The 4C fuel tank is not altered. Optional internals will follow the cold orbit model. We won't be running shields in order to focus the Chieftain harder into its already strong hull. Shields are possible on this platform, though making them strong enough to mean something isn't. Besides, running without shields reduces power draw on the reactor, lowering our overall heat signature and freeing up more resources for the hardpoints to use. The optional internal layout is a combination of hull and module reinforcements. This maximizes survivability over time while minimizing drain on other systems. It also provides a secure foundation for engineering later on. We won't be installing limpets or cargo racks because the ripsaw is too slow to escape from interceptors making these items less useful. This mix of hull and module reinforcements is flexible, so feel free to adjust the ratio according to your own tastes. 
Note that this build uses two module reinforcement packages, 1D and 1E. This mixture offers a good balance of protection and longevity. Your onboard computer will warn you when one of these packs fails, providing some advance notice before internal damage starts to become unmanageable. It's a good idea to break off and retreat when a module reinforcement fails, since you run the risk of losing key systems like the power plant and thrusters. The size 1 optional is a small auto field maintenance unit. This helps with the chieftain's canopy, which is still fairly fragile, even with a double module reinforcement pack helping harden it up. The AFM can be used to mend other systems in a pinch, but does not have the longevity to manage much overall damage. Our hardpoint configuration takes advantage of two size 3 enhanced AX multi cannon gimbals. When it comes to multi cannons, bigger is better, with a higher armor piercing rating making them more effective against interceptors. Pairing these cannons together along the spine makes aiming easy, providing ample outgoing damage against scouts and plenty of precision targeting against interceptor hearts. The medium hardpoint can be considered a mission specific mount. When fighting Thargoids in open space, a flak launcher can be used to help manage Thargon drone swarms. An additional multi-cannon may be added to assist with scouts and hearts around surface ports, or an AX missile rack fitted for extra exertion damage in general. I favor a flak launcher for much of this footage, since it has a lot of defensive utility where Thargons will be sharing your airspace. Once engineering becomes available, other good options for this slot may be better. For shield damage, this build is equipped with three gimbaled beam lasers. These are a favorite among AXI commanders for their ability to leverage the thermal vent experimental effect to help cool hot running builds with Guardian weapons. They can also facilitate rapid overheating of otherwise cool running builds when needed. Beam lasers are terrible for applied damage to Thargoid ships. They still have a ton of utility and remain common to AX ships in general. When it comes time to upgrade, these weapons can still be relevant, though they are swappable for the various size 1 Guardian hardpoints if desired. Note that, when mapping your hardpoints, you will want the flexibility to fire different weapons independent of one another. Lasers for shields, missiles for interceptor exertion, multi-cannons for hearts and scouts, flak for Thargon swarms. This ensures that you get the most damage per unit of ammo. Whether you do this with primary and secondary fire, or organize it in some other useful way is your choice. Utility mounts will leverage an enhanced Xeno scanner to feed targeting data to the multi-cannons. This is essential for accurate aiming against maneuvering interceptors, so don't skip it. A shutdown field neutralizer is also essential, since this build is focused on supporting defensive actions. Any operation in or near a star point is going to get pulsed multiple times, so this defensive utility is likewise essential. The two remaining utility mounts will be a pair of heat sinks, useful for releasing cook-off heat or masking your signature from interceptors. Here is the full build as indicated on ED Shipyard. Power management is not complicated for this build, though be sure to define your priorities, since all loads combined exceed 40% reactor capacity. I have the frameshift drive mapped as priority 1 for open space escapes but around ports you may need to map thrusters first, as losing them on approach to a landing pad can be dangerous. Flight characteristics are surprisingly good. The ripsaw costs about 60 million to build using A-rated hardware, but commanders on a budget can substitute B-rated gear to knock the price down around 50 million. Rebuy costs are very manageable at about 3 million, meaning all you have to do is kill one Cyclops per rebuy to continue to turn a profit. The Ripsaw is able to kill a Cyclops solo with deft handling, though it puts a lot of pressure on you as the pilot not to make a mistake. Flight assist is very important if you attend to strike out alone, as turning it off will preserve your momentum in maneuvers, allowing your ship to constantly move at its fastest. Be careful turning flight assist off around planetary ports, since even standard gravity environments can be hazardous. With an A-rated capacitor, the Chieftain already has perma-boost capability, with an aggressive boost profile that is very spammable on a cold orbiting build. The Ripsaw doesn't fly fast, but it can sustain flight at the peak of its available performance. The engines do require a lot of power to pull this off, meaning that boost spam only works with 4 pips to engines. 
High maneuverability and abundant hard points make this ship great at hunting down scouts. Hull resilience is high, but modules and internal systems are vulnerable without up armor engineering. He systems tend to become unreliable below 50% hull, so have a plan to exit engagements around that threshold, as your lower speed means extra time is needed to position for a jump. With a max boost in the high 300s, a hyperspace jump is the best option for escaping bad situations that involve interceptors. Low wake escapes are still possible, though only when taking advantage of the merge and escape method, where you get the interceptor to chase you at its full speed, then flip and burn like hell past the interceptor while it tries to change direction. With good timing, it's possible to get an interceptor more than 5 kilometers away, allowing an escape to supercruise, though you will be accepting a lot of damage to pull this off. While the Ripsaw can perform a solo Cyclops kill, more than two attacking interceptors has a tendency to overwhelm, especially if Thargons are in play. With fast acceleration, excellent agility, and a strong hull, the Ripsaw does best in port defense operations. Remember, you aren't much more powerful than NPC ships, so use them to your advantage, and stay close to allies who can help draw fire. When used smartly, with well-timed attack runs, in cooperation with NPC ships, the Ripsaw is a competent build with moderate expense requirements that is very attainable for new and moderate experienced players. It can be assembled quickly, and makes a strong foundation for engineering and tech broker improvements to be added later on. The Chieftain platform is an excellent, competent, popular ship design with plenty of options for aspiring commanders to experiment with, while providing extra earning power for commanders to make the next step in their careers. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.